Hi, my name is Blake Angels. I'm a product specialist for the music production department of the Pro Music Division of the Omaha Corporation of America. And I'm here to show you a little bit about Montage and the new firmware update version 1.5. And I'll start out by playing a song that I'm actually connecting my wonderful iPhone to the uh, Montage via audio because it is iOS compatible. So audio and MIDI can be sent and received to this here device and an iPad if that were also connected. So um, every sound that you're going to hear, even though it's coming from the phone, I generated it on the montage. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play it now. And here we go. Let's see. Get this all dialed in here. Very good. Cool. Thank you very much. So, what? again, everything Two. that you heard oh, is being <laughs> taken away from yours. Everything you heard was generated from the, um, the, the montage, all of the sounds, everything. Um, the, the sound that I use actually in here, this first one, not that one, but this one here, is part of the Chick Corea Rhodes Library for montage that we will be releasing later on in the year as freemium content, downloadable free. It's Chick Corea's Rhodes that they meticulously sampled every single note on his personal Mark V, and then we put that sample content into Montage and did a lot of editing to really make the, uh, the, the Mark V really interesting. Lots of different performances, 16 total. So there's that. So Montage 1.50 firmware update um, focuses on the three kind of guiding principles of Montage, which are sound, 
control and workflow, and there's significant enhancements in all three of those areas. In sound, there's a total of 52 new performances. And last year, when we released the montage, we really focused um, deeply on the acoustic content, the pianos and the strings and the horns and so on. And that's, that really captivates a lot of people hearing how amazing that sounds. Well, this year we want to kind of focus on the synthesizer engine itself and how, am how amazing that is. So with the 52 per new performances, they're very much focusing on, on stuff you've never heard before. Very, very cool synth kind of content, kind of like this. So I'll play something here that's pretty cool. a little bit of a, a little taste of the new content. It's very, very edgy, cool, interesting, very unique. Nothing else sounds like montage. So in addition to the sounds, we also have um, some new um, dynamics processing. So for production, we have an upward compressor, a downward compressor. So what an upward compressor does, it takes things that are very low in the mix and brings them up. For a downward compressor, things that are very hot in the mix and brings them, brings them down in the mix. So it's, it's a little bit quicker control than just moving the faders. It allows you to have a little bit more um, presence and clarity in each of the tracks with these two compressors. We also have parallel compression, where you get the compressed signal and the dry signal simultaneously, and that allows for great for drum kits. It actually brings out a lot of the nuances of the drum kit. And then there's a new presence that is just an overall nuance enhancer of the entire mix that you can apply as well. So we added those things for production as well. And then we have a new rotary speaker. Um, the new rotary speaker adds a really nice overdrive to the, uh, to, to the rotary speaker um, effect area. There's a couple of them in there, but this is a new one. It also has a nice, um, a nice uh, speaker cabinet simulator. So it's a nice vintage, nice sound. I'll play some of the... So it has that nice, hot, you know, when you go up, that's the sound that I've really been looking for. And a lot of that's to do with the fact that we added the, 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 um, the overdrive circuit to it. And then we have drawbar control on a lot of these guys as well.
nice rotary speaker upgrade. Definitely a big, big update. So we were talking about workflow. I'm going to move to workflow and go back to control for the end here. But for workflow, there's just a whole lot of things as far as just using montage, as far as visibility goes. There's a lot of things in the performance mode that at a glance, I can see things like where split points are in a very nice graphic um, interface now by pressing a view button it slides over the main screen and gives me a little bit more information about the performance I'm on, uh, that I'm on. I can also set velocity settings by uh, pressing where I want to change the, the velocity and then press the keyboard and then I can strike the keyboard for a louder or a softer velocity so I can basically have things that only happen when I really hit the keyboard hard. So if there's like a horn kick that I want to apply to an electric piano, I can do that by adding a horn part to an electric piano part and then velocity, making the velocity from like 100 to 127 or 120 to 127 so that when I play something really hard, that's only when it brings in the, the horn kick. So things like that that we've added that it's a lot easier to do. You could do that with Montage before. Now you can do it right from one screen. So there's a lot of cool things as far as, um, as workflow goes. Now, as far as control goes, there's a lot of ways we can now, the super knob controls eight assignable knobs, and those assignable knobs can do a lot of very drastic things. And sometimes when you just want to control one parameter and you want to release some of the knobs, well, before that was a little bit more of a difficult thing. You had to drop into performance. Now I can select in the screen which knobs are, are, are being controlled by the super knobs. So I can release them and then individually control just a single knob being that if I turn the super knob as it was, it controls all eight knobs. So I can release knobs and have a little bit more control over, um, over the instrument. And during editing, I can kind of dial in what it is I'm listening to that the super knob is doing. Little things like that that you kind of have to experience to check out. Um, great for montage owners, without a doubt, though. They'll really find a lot of usability to how the, how the instrument operates. And then the last thing I want to show here is really the coolest thing that I've seen in in a long time, and what it's called is Auto Beat Sync, and it's something that we released um, with the original montage, but they really dialed in this feature um, with version 1.5. What Auto Beat Sync is, let's say I have a performance that is a nice, an arpeggiated performance like this. Now, that's, that's cool and everything. Let's say I wanted to use that in a band. Well, how, how, would I, how would I use that arpeggiated performance? Well, before what it has to do is you have to be able to hear the arpeggio, and the whole band has to sync to the arp content. And that's kind of a drag, especially if there's, if there's issues with time in the band or whatever. What you really would like is if somehow the arpeggio could follow the audio input from the drummer, maybe. And that's what we have set up here. I have Peyton back here. This is MK, and this is awesome to see these guys here. And they're going to play with me here on this thing. But I'm gonna, first, I'm going to start with Peyton here. And what I need to do, I need to drop into my tempo settings. And there's three selections I can make. One of them is internal sync. One of them is MIDI sync. So I'd be maybe getting the sync from, a, from an external DAW source like Cubase. And then there's the A to D input. So if I set it to A to D input, and I have it routing into my A to D. I turn it on. I set my level. Go ahead. And